Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad-free over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. The last house on the left from 1972, directed by Wes Craven, the man who redefined horror movies every generation he was around, uh, which this movie apparently was something that definitely dramatically changed uh, horror, obviously made it far more brutal uh, than it was. Uh, this movie is brutal. Definitely a movie, I, this is my first time watching it. Uh, obviously, I've seen Scream. I love the Scream franchise. That was a franchise of films that came out when I was late years in high school just after high school so a movie franchise a horror franchise that i grew up watching one of my favorites last year i dove into the nightmare on elm street is that it am i saying yeah the nightmare on elm street uh franchise of movies that he spawned with the creation of the kind of the horror monster which is so popular with movies like halloween and friday the 13th and uh i was excited to watch this movie another 70s horror classic also i believe the first film from wes craven if i'm not mistaken uh, so i was excited to watch it and i enjoyed this movie Definitely has the same types of things, very 70s style, which, you know, being a horror film, being his first film, but also being from the 70s, it has that rough type of a feel. The acting is of a certain quality, but the brutality of this film was surprising. Considering the movies he made later on in his career with Scream and Friday the 13th, this one is definitely more of a grounded take on a horror film. There are no monsters. There are no real serial killers. It is just human beings doing horrific things, which I actually find to be my favorite type of horror film. More than supernatural, more than your typical monsters like a vampire or even a zombie, more than even the 80s types of slasher films, which are a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong. I do enjoy many different types of horror films, but this one is very much in my lane as far as a subgenre of horror film that I like kind of has that Henry portrait of a serial killer vibe or even the Indian film I talked about last week ravenous very like real people real characters kind of real scenarios that spin out of control right where horrific people kind of butt up against just normal everyday people horrific things happen all the time I mean this is a story that you could have heard on a countless number of true crime podcasts or true crime documentaries on Netflix, uh, but it is a fictional tale uh, that's tragic, tragic and brutal. So with that said, I am going to be spoiling this movie as I talk about it, but I did enjoy it. It, it, is, it is kind of mind-blowing to see where Wes Craven started. Like, this dude went hard when he started doing horror films and from what i've heard as far as him reinventing the genre i think taking it in like a brutal almost realistic take to something horrific happening uh is is kind of shocking it's shocking and awesome like it's uh i'm i'm glad that i i came across it i've heard the remake is horrible uh which most remakes are Although last week I talked about another 70s classic horror film, Suspiria, which I have a feeling I probably would enjoy a remake of that more just because there were aspects of it. The kind of 70s style of acting and just the technical abilities of a lot of horror directors may be a bit limiting back then uh, versus the refinement that you see in modern movies, even low-budget modern movies. Uh, with technology being so much more affordable and available as com in comparison, not having to pay for film and such. Uh, but yeah, 
I did enjoy this movie. It is a brutal movie. Uh, there are aspects of it that are kind of cheesy and corny and whatever, but overall, I enjoy. I definitely enjoyed this more than Suspiria if I were ranking these two 70s horror classics. Uh, but this movie is starts off with these two girls hanging out. They're like, I don't know, late teens, maybe early 20s. Uh, they're going around town. They're they're like live not in a city. There's a lot of wilderness. They're walking around outside in the trees by a river. There's like somebody stores a bottle of booze in the river, ties it to a string, which is inventive. Like it really grounds it in a reality of that kind of lifestyle growing up. They go to like get ice cream. The music that plays is there's such a contrast that is set with this movie with the music that's played while these girls are just enjoying life, going around, talking about boys, talking about dating, getting ice cream, cut to the parents at home, baking a cake, like this goofy, cheery, jolly music cut with and contrasted by the brutal, visceral nature of these uh, convicts that escaped. Right? There's a news bulletin on the radio about these convicts that escaped, one of which drugged his son with heroin in order to control him. Uh, there's this other guy who is like a child molester and a peeping Tom. And then there's this woman that's described as animal-like. Uh, so it's like these degenerate criminals that escaped prison, the kid is high on heroin dad controls him keeping him doped up on heroin which is crazy and then you see them and you see kind of you know what those types of people are like which is feels like an honest like there are people like that like there are people that live that kind of reality and are just so far gone on such the fringes of society that they exist you know where crime and and trauma and horrific things are an regular aspect to their life and this movie shows the naivete of kids the the street smarts that they are lacking uh when it comes to understanding that there are predators out there, right? There's, like, when you grow up in a cheery, happy suburban neighborhood, you think everybody's nice, your neighbors are cool, but the reality of things is are that people can do horrific things. People could take advantage of you and take advantage of your naivete in ways that are horrible. And as these girls are trying to score some weed for, I think, after prom or whatever. Um, they go to the city, right? And they ask a guy, before weed was recreationally legal in a lot of states, before it was medically legal, uh, you had to go to a dealer. And the, the biggest way to get into other drugs is to go to a dealer and they'd be out of weed and they just like, what else you got, right? That's... That's one of the reasons why having drugs be legalized just encourages drug use in the worst and, and the, behave, the, the criminal behaviors that surround it in ways that are unnecessary if you were to just decriminalize it and regulate it like all of the other drugs that are available to people, right? Weed, one of the safest drugs known to man, impossible to die it's impossible to consume uh, an amount of weed that would kill you versus regular water. If you were to consume a certain amount of water, you could literally die um, from overhydration. So that side out of it, uh, they go to get drugs. And of course they go to the wrong person and uh, they end up, Oh we, yeah, I got it. Just come up with me to the, to of the room and we'll we'll get you your stuff and of course they get led into a room that's full of these criminals gets the door locked and now they're trapped 
Now they're trapped. Now they become the entertainment. They become the playthings of these, you know, just these toxic predators, right? Let's take a little break from the show to promote. If you sign up for Inspired Disorder Plus for one year specifically, you get a free painting. So a year subscription of Inspired Disorder Plus is $50. The painting, the majority of them are $100. So it's $150 value signing up for one year of Inspired Disorder Plus. So not only do you get a free painting, but you also are subscribed to Plus for a year, which means that you can binge this show, the Ray Taylor Show, ad-free, the full week ad-free available on Monday. You also get discounts that are members-only pricing type of deals. All of the podcasts that I've produced in the past, close to 20 different podcasts, I've produced hundreds of episodes. There's also my personal blog. You can ask me anything if you want to start podcasting or get into art. All of that stuff available in addition to a free painting when you sign up to one year subscription of Inspired Disorder Plus. Head on over to inspiredisorder.com slash plus and become an Inspired Disorder Plus member today. And now let's get back to the show! And bad things happen. That's where the, 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 the horrific nature of this. They get kidnapped. They leave the city. Now, the thing that's kind of... You gotta, you gotta kind of like go with the punches. You gotta just buy into the reality of this world. That for some reason... These criminals who are driving out of the city just happen to have their car break down right in front or near their house or one of the girls' houses, right? Like, literally, the car breaks down right by their mailbox, which, of course, it's more of a rural thing, so the mailbox is kind of far away. But still, just happens to be, like, out of all of the directions you can drive out of town— these people just happen to drive in the direction that they live, and their car just happened to break down right in front of one of their houses. So they get out of the car. They don't know how to fix it. And then they, like, try and they continue on using these girls as entertainment, having them piss themselves and beat each other up and, you know, just trying to get stripping them naked, just trying to do anything to fuck with them in all of the ways, which is, like... The part of this movie that is in movies like Cannibal Holocaust, which are like they, that type of like like grounded, real, horrific things that people will do to each other is kind of highlighted in those these movies. And it's crazy. So, of course, one of them gets free. Right? It's like, I'm going to do this thing, and you run. Like One of them leaves. Like The, the, the bad guys all kind of split up, and one of them has an idea. It's like, I will, put, I will get out of here. I'll cause a distraction, and as I go, you leave. But like, just another aspect of this movie is in addition to these bad guys breaking down coincidentally right in front of the house, right by the house of one of these girls, is that this girl runs away and has a massive lead and yet somehow is able to get caught by like three of them. She doesn't end well for her, right? She ends up getting stabbed, carved up, all this disgusting stuff, raped. But like, there's no reason. There's no reason somebody that grew up playing outdoors in forests running around would not be able to easily get away from a bunch of city people that are criminals that you have a massive lead on but whatever that's one of the other aspects of this movie that's like okay you just gotta just like okay she somehow didn't get away and then the other girl who is left with the son who is strung out on heroin, instead of just trying to run away, push him down and run away, she spends the entire time trying to reason with him. Like, oh yeah, my dad, he's a... 
he's a counselor and he actually has stuff at my house we can go to my house We're right by my house i can go and i can get you a fix she's trying to reason with him the entire time instead of just pushing him and bolting right your life like you aren't going to these people are just playing around with you like a cat playing around with a mouse before it ends up just killing it right they are playing with you until they're done torturing you and then they will just end your life and then get rid of you and just dispose of your body wherever right as they move on so kind of frustrating watching not only one of these women finally get free have a lead and then somehow completely squander that lead you have this other person trying to reason with somebody who's strung out like there's no reasoning with these people right that's just another one of these that kind of just ignorance when dealing with certain kinds of people when you're dealing with like desperate people that have nothing to lose you can't reason there is no reasoning with them they have nothing to lose like their life is a constant string of desperation right they are they are they are just causing hell because that is the life that they've existed in so aside from that frustration right both of those girls doesn't end well right the one that got caught tried to run away she she ends up getting put down this other girl who tries to reason with them doesn't go well right she gets carved up and she gets like she kind of just in a delirious traumatic state walks herself into the river where one of the guys just she puts her out of her misery and then they, these people clean up right because their car is still broken they clean up and they happen to go to one of these girls houses right the the parents that were baking the cake it's their house their daughter and these people show up all cleaned up wearing suits like oh yeah we're like insurance salesmen or whatever and our car broke down the garage is closed so it's like can we stay the night which is crazy anyway but you're in a rural place i guess people show up wearing suits you assume okay you can stay here whatever whatever but then the, the parents are smart right one of them goes through their suitcase and sees bloody clothes and they just put the pieces together and they both run out and they see one of the they find somehow find one of these bodies they find the friend's body like oh they did it right and then it's it has a turn where it's like now you have these parents going to seek revenge and it's almost like home alone where this guy this dad is setting up these traps putting a piece of string through one of the hallways for somebody to trip putting like shaving cream on the floor for him to slip uh tying a electric cable to a doorknob like very home alone style he's about to take out the the soggy bandits the wet bandits whatever those guys names were in that movie which is kind of funny to see him set up these things and then as he does that one of the guys is like kind of figures it out and is hitting on the the wife and she's like oh we should go outside she plays into it it's like oh yeah i I want a guy like you. I want a guy that knows how to handle a woman. Let's go outside so my husband doesn't hear us, right? And then that's like the husband is doing these childish booby traps, right? Like somebody's on the search for Curly's gold and he's going to he's going to bamboozle them with some booby traps. They're going to trip over a, a string like a like a slippery banana. <laughs> wah wah wah, you know? But the mom goes out and she's like pretending to be into this guy, goes down on him, and she ends up biting his dick off, which is the, I mean, you don't, you, you, they don't show it obviously, but you know what's happening, right? Which is the most badass thing. It's like, oh, here we go, right? The vengeance, the payback for what happened. So that was like, holy shit. 
right? S- considering I was just watching, you know, Macaulay Culkin set up some booby traps for these home burglars. Like, she's taking care of business. Right? And then the screaming kind of sets everybody else in motion. And you see the majority of these booby traps fail completely. Like, the dude slips a little. The dude f- trips over. Falls into stuff. Wah, wah, but nothing, nothing really. So the dad's actually having to, like... He gives him a chance to, like, pick up the fireplace poker to, like... To, he gives him like yeah hit me in the face right of course the dude the, the husband not a very good you know doesn't really uh, have the knockout power that he probably wishes he had right the guy's letting him hit him in the face and uh, he's not able to do anything let's take a little break from the show to promote gift certificates if you want to purchase artwork for somebody you have an art lover in your life and you think they would like my art but you don't know what painting to get them i have over 2,000 original pieces of art for sale in my store along with shirts and prints and other things so i can understand that being a bit daunting if you're trying to buy something for somebody else Give them the gift certificate, and then they can go to my website, inspireddisorder.com, and they can buy whatever paintings they want. They can buy whatever prints they want. They can buy T-shirts. They can buy hats. They can buy all the different merch. Gift certificates, which are available currently at inspireddisorder.com. And now let's get back to the show. Until the electric doorknob thing does work, thankfully. And then also he gets his hands on a chainsaw, which a chainsaw is a classic horror weapon of carnage. And the dude's able, and the whole while while this is going on, right, the cops called, oh, my daughter didn't show up for this party. It's her birthday or whatever. And the cops are like, whatever, we're not going to, whatever. Right, they even go, they even see the car that's broken down they're like ah fuck that car we're not going to check out on that car we're not going to look into this thing let's just go back there's nothing here of course the cops not doing their job right very i would say realistic take on the police in our country today who is not good at solving crime not good at committing crimes they are pretty useless aside from sitting around collecting paychecks and then at least in our world in the real world of 2022 very regularly shoot unarmed people murdering unarmed children women men doesn't matter the age or sex a cop if you don't have if may if you have something in your hand or you don't have something in your hand there's a chance they will put you down uh and then just lie about it and get away with it So these cops being idiots is great, right? And they are kind of like bumbling idiots, which I enjoy too. Like they are, their car runs out of gas and then they got to like try and hitch a ride. But of course, nobody wants to help cops out because they're horrible. They try to commandeer this woman who's transporting chickens in her truck. And they're like, yeah, we can't, we're not going to, I'm not unloading my livelihood so that you guys who are unprepared can get a ride to to do something you should have done to begin with so the whole time it's these cops because there's like a uh, apb out like oh they they hear over the radio the type of car that these criminals these these uh these convicts were driving oh and of course it was the car that they walked by and didn't want to look into whatsoever and I'm, i'm had everything to do with the girls who were disappeared Who'd, who'd vanished. So they're just trying to hitchhike to this parent's house. All the while, you have Kevin McAllister with a chainsaw trying to saw this guy in half, right? The wife takes out, I think she kills the, the woman too. Like, the wife is way more of a badass than this husband who set up the dumb booby traps. Uh, but he does get the sa- chainsaw, and just as the cops walk in, he saws the guy in half. Like, the cops show up at the very last moment and, like, try to, like, stop it. So you stop, everybody. We're here. Like, okay. Okay, bro. Where were you? 
So I kind of enjoyed that, right? I enjoyed that the parents had their their retribution. They 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 were able to ev- avenge the death of their daughter, which they I don't think they found their daughter's body. They just found their daughter's friend, but they put the pieces together. They were smart enough to at least prepare to fight these people that were staying. And they didn't know they were going to the parents of this girl. They didn't find out until they go to the bedroom to to lay down for the night and they see picture her pictures. They go to her bedroom. And they're like, oh, this is a coincidence. Like, yeah, no shit. You just out of all of the places for you to drive, all the directions you decided to drive out of town, you drove in the direction of their house. Not only did you drive in that direction, but your car just happened to break down right in front of their house. And then their parents, for whatever reason, just invited you to spend the night. Gives you dinner, gives you some alcohol to drink, gives you a bed to sleep in. So I liked it. I liked the, you know, I liked the contrast in the bumbling idiots and the good time, the kind of cheerful suburban life, and then the brutal reality of what can happen, why it's important to not just blindly trust everybody to have some level of street smarts in order to avoid, you know, getting kidnapped not that I'm victim victim blaming, but if these girls were more, you know, if they didn't just go to some stranger's apartment in the city to buy drugs, you know, they put themselves in a bad situation that got really bad. And, uh, you know, on some level... You have to have personal responsibility, you know? You're willing to take chances doing things that are outside of the realm of comfortability. You have to be prepared for the worst things happening. I don't know. I enjoyed this movie. I thought it was great. Brutal, brutal movie. The, the, you know, unlike a lot of brutal movies that are just kind of brutal in order to serve the message it's delivering this had that 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 comeback that vengeance type of moment where the parents uh, are able to avenge their daughter's death which i appreciated that as well but a great movie i'm glad i got to watch it i have no desire to watch the remake i've heard it's not good uh but this one was good you know Despite the, like, 70s kind of cheesiness, despite some of the kind of, like, clunky acting, despite the fact that some of the booby traps were just ridiculous. Like, one of them, he stuck a spoon into a floorboard, into a, like, a, a that molding, and just tied a string around. It just, I don't know squirting shaving cream on the floor it was pretty wacky and then it just didn't do anything except for making him trip very ineffective the doorknob electrocuted doorknob that was good that was good i give him that that worked the chainsaw should have been a go-to they should have had some kind of weapons on them some kind of blunt instruments you know the wife wait she took care of it Right. Biting off a dude's dick. Perfect. Right. Like, thankfully, that dude married a smart woman because she knew exactly what would work and how to make it happen. Good stuff. Anyway, uh, check it out. Last last house on the left from the year 1972, directed by Wes Craven. Crazy. Watch it. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. And follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Out! Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.